In this video, we're going to talk about the converse Pythagorean theorem. It starts off like this. Let A, B, and C be sides of a triangle with C the largest. First of all, if c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. This is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem because the Pythagorean theorem goes the other way. The Pythagorean theorem says that if we have a right triangle with legs a and b and a hypotenuse c, then we have that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now the converse is just saying that if you have any triangle which holds in this relation c squared equals a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is necessarily a right triangle. So basically we can tell whether or not a triangle is a right triangle based on its side lengths alone. But wait, there's more. Even if c squared is not equal to a squared or b squared, there are still things that we can say about the triangle. To help us visualize all this, why don't we draw a few little diagrams over here. So for this statement, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, we have a right triangle, then we might have something like this. This could be the side a, this could be the side b, and this could be the hypotenuse c, the largest side in that right triangle. Okay, the next one is pretty similar, but it goes if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is an acute triangle. And intuitively, this just happens because the largest side then isn't large enough to make a right triangle. Again, let's draw a little diagram to visualize that. So maybe we have the same kind of side A here, and the side C goes in a similar direction, but this time it doesn't quite make it as far. It's a little bit shorter. Then the side B has to angle upward a little bit. And that angle, which initially was a right angle, becomes an acute angle. All right, and here's the last one. The last one is if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is an obtuse triangle. And that happens because the longest side is then too long to form the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Why don't we draw another little visualization so that we can really understand what's going on. So we'll have the same side A, and the side C will go in the same kind of direction, but this time let's extend it a bit longer than it was originally. So now the side B has to angle downwards a little bit from its original position in order to meet the side C. And the angle there now becomes an obtuse angle. All right, so now that we know how the converse Pythagorean theorem can be used to identify right, acute, and obtuse triangles from their side lengths, let's go ahead and do some problems. So we want to tell what kind of triangle has the given side lengths for each of these problems. First, let's start with the leftmost one, a triangle having side lengths four, eight, and three. All right, so the biggest side here is eight. So that'll be our C value. So we need to compare eight squared to the sum of squares of the other values. All right, so, so four and three, either one could be A or B. Why don't we just say four is A here? So, all right four squared, and we'll say three is B, so plus three squared. All that matters is that C is the largest side in the triangle. 
All right, so eight squared is 64, four squared is 16, and then three squared is nine. And 16 plus nine is just 25. So we're really comparing 64 to 25. Of course, 64 is greater than 25, so we have eight squared is greater than four squared plus three squared. And then we're in this case here, c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared. So therefore the triangle is an obtuse triangle. All right, next problem, side lengths four, three, and five. So biggest side here is five. So we want to compare five squared to the sum of squares of the other sides. There's four, and then there's also three. Now five squared is 25, and we've already done the work here to know that four squared plus three squared is 25. So 25, 25, okay, so five squared is equal to four squared plus three squared. So that means the longest side is just long enough to be the hypotenuse in a right triangle. So there we go, it's a right triangle. Last one, side length three, three, and four. So now the longest side is four, so we'll put four squared, and then the other two sides are three and three. So we're comparing 16, that's four squared, to three squared, which is nine, plus another three squared, which is also nine. So comparing 16 to 18, and 18 is bigger, so four squared is less than three squared plus three squared, which means the larger side is a bit too small to be a right triangle, and it brings the other two sides closer together. The less than corresponds to the case of an acute triangle. So there we go, it's acute. All right, here's another problem. In the triangle ABC, the greatest side length is AB, which is x plus two, and the other side lengths are BC, which is x plus one, and AC, which is x. For which value of x is the triangle ABC a right triangle? Okay, well, we're going to be using the converse Pythagorean theorem, so let's identify the longest side. It says right here, the greatest side length is AB, which is x plus two, so let's circle that. And then the other two side lengths are BC, which is X plus one, and AC, which is X. Now we want to choose X so that the triangle ABC is a right triangle. That means, according to the converse Pythagorean theorem, that we need the square of the longest side, let's write that down, the square of the longest side is X plus two squared. We need that to be equal to the sum of squares of the other sides, so equal to the sum x plus one squared plus x squared. And now we can just go ahead and simplify the equation. So x plus two squared, well, the rule for that is first term squared, so x squared plus two times x times the other term two, and then plus two squared. So that's equal to x plus one squared using the rule for squares of binomials, we have x squared, then plus two times x times one, then plus one squared, and then plus the x squared at the end. So let's just write that one more time neatly. We have x squared plus two times two is four, so four x, then plus two squared is four, so four is equal to x squared plus x squared makes 2x squared, and then 2 times 1 is 2, then times x makes 2x, and then plus 1 squared, so just plus 1. All right, so now we've got a quadratic equation, and remember how we solve quadratic equations is we get one side to be 0. So why don't we go ahead and subtract all of this side off, so this side becomes 0, and we'll just subtract x squared, so minus x squared minus 4x minus for x and then minus four. All right, we'll do that. And then all of the terms on this side will cancel. We'll just have zero is equal to two x squared minus x squared just makes one x squared. So just x squared. And then plus two x minus four x, two minus four is negative two. So minus two x and then plus one minus four, one minus four is negative three. So minus three. 
Now we can factor this right hand side here. So zero equals, let's write out our factors here. So we'll have x here, x here, and now we have to find the two numbers that multiply to negative three and add to negative two. Well, only factors of, of three are one and three, so which one do we have to make negative? Well, negative two is, is negative, so we have to make the bigger number negative, make three negative. So x minus three and x plus one. Now using the zero product property, we can set each of these factors equal to zero to find a solution. So x minus three equals zero, or x plus one equals zero. If x minus three equals zero, then we have x equals three, just adding three to both sides. If x plus one equals zero, then subtract one from both sides and get x equals negative one. Okay, so which is it, x equals three or x equals negative one or, or both of them? Well, we need to check the side lengths. So if x equals three, then the biggest side, AB, is x plus two, three plus two, which is five. And then the side BC, which is x plus one, becomes three plus one, which is four. And then the side AC, which is just x, becomes three. So that seems like a perfectly fine triangle, sides five, four, three. Let's check x equals negative one. So if x equals negative one, then the side AB becomes negative one plus two, which is just one. And the side BC becomes negative one plus one, which is zero. And uh oh, there's, there's a problem. We can't have a side of length zero in a physical triangle. That just doesn't make any sense. Especially since the other side AC then would then just be x negative one. We can't have negative lengths either. So the solution x equals negative one doesn't actually give us a right triangle. So we, we discard it, this is no good. And we stick with the solution x equals three, which actually gives us a triangle with all positive side lengths satisfying this Pythagorean theorem. So there we go, there's our result, x equals three. Now we know how to use the converse Pythagorean theorem to tell whether a triangle is right, acute, or obtuse just based on its side lengths. In the future, we will also learn about special kinds of right triangles, such as isosceles right triangles and 30-60-90 right triangles.